Tantra According to the Tantra, the ultimate reality is Chit or Consciousness, which is identical with Sat or Being and with Ananda or Bliss. This ultimate reality, Sat Chit Ananda, existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute, is identical with the reality preached in the Vedas. And man is identical with this reality. But under the influence of Maya or illusion, he has forgotten his true nature. He takes to be real a merely apparent world of subject and object. And this error is the cause of his bondage and suffering. The goal of spiritual discipline is the rediscovery of his true identity with the divine reality. For the achievement of this goal, the Vedanta prescribes an austere negative method of discrimination and renunciation, which can be followed by only a few individuals endowed with sharp intelligence and unshakable willpower. But Tantra takes into consideration the natural weaknesses of human beings, their lower appetites and their love for the concrete. It combines philosophy with rituals, meditation with ceremonies, renunciation with enjoyment. The underlying purpose is gradually to train the aspirant to meditate on his identity with the ultimate. The average man wishes to enjoy the material objects of the world. Tantra bids him enjoy these, but at the same time discover in them the presence of God. Mystical rites are prescribed by which slowly the sense objects become spiritualized and sense attraction is transformed into a love of God. So the very bonds of man are turned into releasers. The very poison that kills is transmuted into the elixir of life. Outward renunciation is not necessary. Thus, the aim of Tantra is to sublimate bhoga or enjoyment into yoga or union with consciousness. For, according to this philosophy, the world with all its manifestations is nothing but the sport of Shiva and Shakti, the absolute and its inscrutable power. The disciplines of Tantra are graded to suit aspirants of all degrees. Exercises are prescribed for people with animal, heroic and divine outlooks. Certain of the rites require the presence of members of the opposite sex. Here, the aspirant learns to look on women as the embodiment of the goddess Kali, the mother of the universe. The very basis of Tantra is the motherhood of God and the glorification of woman. Every part of a woman's body 
is to be regarded as incarnate divinity. But the rites are extremely dangerous. The help of a qualified guru is absolutely necessary. An unwary devotee may lose his foothold and fall into a pit of depravity. According to the Tantra, Shakti is the active creative force in the universe. Shiva, the Absolute, is a more or less passive principle. Further, Shakti is as inseparable from Shiva as fire's power to burn is from fire itself. Shakti, the creative power, contains in its womb the universe and therefore is the Divine Mother. All women are her symbols. Kali is one of her several forms. The meditation on Kali, the creative power, is the central discipline of the Tantra. While meditating, the aspirant at first regards himself as one with the Absolute and then thinks that out of that impersonal consciousness emerge two entities, namely his own self and the living form of the Goddess. He then projects the Goddess into the tangible image before him and worships it as the Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna set himself to the task of practicing the disciplines of Tantra and at the bidding of the Divine Mother herself he accepted the Brahmani as his Guru. He performed profound and delicate ceremonies in the Panchvati and under the Bail tree at the northern extremity of the temple compound. He practiced all the disciplines of the 64 principal Tantra books and it took him never more than three days to achieve the result promised in any one of them. After the observance of a few preliminary rites, he would be overwhelmed with a strange divine fervor and would go into Samadhi, where his mind would dwell in exaltation. Evil ceased to exist for him. The word carnal lost its meaning. The whole world and everything in it appeared as the Leela, the sport of Shiva and Shakti. He beheld everywhere manifest the power and beauty of the Mother. The whole world, animate and inanimate, appeared to him as pervaded with Chitta consciousness and with ananda, bliss. He saw in a vision the ultimate cause of the universe as a huge luminous triangle giving birth every moment to an infinite number of worlds. He heard the Anahata Shabda, the great sound Om of which the innumerable sounds of the universe are only so many echoes. He acquired 
the eight supernatural powers of yoga which makes a man almost omnipotent and these he spurned as of no value whatsoever to the spirit he had a vision of the divine maya the inscrutable power of god by which the universe is created and sustained and into which it is finally absorbed in this vision he saw a woman of exquisite beauty about to become a mother emerging from the ganges and slowly approaching the panchavati presently she gave birth to a child and began to nurse it tenderly a moment later she assumed a terrible aspect seized the child with her grim jaws and crushed it swallowing it she reentered the waters of the ganges but the most remarkable experience during this period was the awakening of the kundalini shakti the serpent power he actually saw the power at first lying asleep at the bottom of the spinal column then waking up and ascending along the mystic shushumna canal and through its six centers or lotuses to the sahasrara the thousand petaled lotus in the top of the head he further saw that as the kundalini went upward the different lotuses bloomed and this phenomena was accompanied by visions and trances later on he described to his disciples and devotees the various movements of the kundalini the fish like bird like monkey like and so on the awakening of the kundalini is the beginning of the spiritual consciousness and its union with the shiva in the sahasrara ending in samadhi is the consummation of the tantric disciplines about this time it was revealed to him that in a short while many devotees would seek his guidance